So pretty much got everything cleaned up how I want it before I can do the adjustment. I remembered. Ugh. Remember that I bought a um, tail tidy kit. I bought it about three months ago and I've been debating whether I want to really put it on or not. So basically the tail tidy kit will remove this guy right here. Put your license plate and everything right here. And it should pretty much clean up the back end. So had my reservations about taking it off, but since basically it's stripped down, I'm halfway there already, so I might as well do it. So this chain maintenance video is gonna take a slight turn. I think I'm gonna just do it. So welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today we're gonna be doing a quick uh, chain maintenance. So what this is gonna include for me is uh, cleaning the chain up a little bit and just checking and adjusting the actual slack on it. So um, before we jump into it, uh, for the CV1000R, it is listed right here, um, the actual measurements that you need. So I don't know if you guys can see this, but there is a down arrow right here. And that's basically telling you that's where you need to measure from. The slack itself should be between one and three quarter to two inches. So that's how much play. And uh, from the picture, it look like it's in the middle of the chain. That's where the measurement is taken, not the actual uh, top of the chain. So uh, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna get the actual guard here off of it. That involves removing two bolts from here and two right there. Then we should be able to get in there, uh, start our cleaning and then do our adjustments. So for this job, you are gonna need a couple tools. Not exactly what I have here, but just as long as you have something similar. So uh, definitely you're gonna need the spanner tool. This came with the CB1000R. Uh, if you don't have it, that's something I can drop in the description for you. Gonna need a ruler or something to measure the, the actual distance between the chain. You're gonna need a torque wrench to tighten your bolts back up. You're also gonna need uh, some Allen heads with the three eighths or half inch. That way you can tighten everything up, up to torque. I believe it's a six millimeter to loosen it, but I'll show you guys when I get there. I also have this digital measuring tool, but I'm um, probably not gonna use it. Uh, seem like a ruler should be enough. Additionally, I have a cleaning kit. I'll link that in the description. Also have some chain um, lubricant, chain cleaner right there. And I have a, a a roller for the wheel. That's if you guys don't have a jack, you could essentially put the bike on top of this. That way you can rotate the actual wheel when you're cleaning it. Also, I did buy a, um, a jack for the CB1000R and that video should be dropping soon. All right, let's get into it. So you're gonna need a 316 Allen key for these two. And then for those two in the back, you are gonna need an eight millimeter socket. Also on this side, we also need to remove uh, this little bolt in there. And the other side, we also need to remove uh, this guy right here. Uh, another Allen key, don't know the exact size, but uh, fumble around, you should find it. Uh, this one is really in between a rock and a hard place. So you're gonna have to use um, something with an angle like this to get to it. All right, so look like we have these cables in here that we need to remove as well. So let's remove those and then we should be able to take this off. So now we got everything off. Here's a look at the two pinch bolts. So we have one right here and the other one's on the other side. So you're gonna have to maneuver a little bit just to figure out the best way to get these off. You will probably need an extension. You also need a ratchet, of course. And of course, when you tighten it back up, you are gonna need a torque wrench. First thing I wanna do is go ahead and get the chain cleaned up. For me, I am gonna be using a roller just to keep everything on the floor. Uh, but this is pretty straightforward. Um, all you do basically is put the bike on here, the rear wheel. Um, of course, it will need to be in neutral. Um, put the tire on here and you should be able to turn the tire free. For, that way it's easier for you to clean the chain. So let's go ahead and do that. So this kit is supposed to help just some of the spillage not happen. So um, this is supposed to go under your chain like this. This part adjusts up. And what you do is put this little guy on top. Just like 
that. So now when you do your spraying, whether it's the greaser or the chain lube, it will go in that bottle instead of going on the floor. So we're gonna test it out and see how it works. So pretty much got everything cleaned up how I want it before I can do the adjustment. I remembered. Ugh. Remember that I bought a um, tail tidy kit. Bought it about three months ago and I've been debating whether I want to really put it on or not. So basically the tail tidy kit will remove this guy right here. Put your license plate and everything right here. Um, and it should pretty much clean up the back end. So had my reservations about taking it off, but since basically it's stripped down, I'm halfway there already, so I might as well do it. So this chain maintenance video is gonna take a slight turn. I did a short about this. I, I bought the tail tidy kit and I started liking how the stock back end looks. And I think I'm gonna just do it. This is what's um, in the tail tidy kit for mustard. We have some brackets right here for the um, indicators. We have a card. So it looks like we have another spacer. We have some screws. We have some zip ties. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the install. I'm gonna try to provide some details. But mustard actually did a really good job on um, on YouTube. Where well, they went step by step providing every detail, every tool that you'll need, pictures, diagrams, there's no way I can outdo them, but I wanna just quickly do the install, do the chain maintenance, and um, call it a day. So this is gonna be the harness that goes to the brake light. Uh, looks like for the actual rear end, we have one and we have another bolt right here in the back end. So it looks like there's three of them. There's one right there. There's another one right here. And there's another one right in there. So, uh, so we're gonna go ahead and get those off and then we're gonna have to snip the wires, which is a scary part, but we have to do that just as a part of the install. So for those two that we're gonna need to release, we need a Torx, uh, which looks like this. It's kind of like a star. Uh, it is a T40. The first one is tucked behind, so you can't remove the wheel to do it, but you don't necessarily need to. You can get into it from here. So you can see right there, I'm in. Then you take the time and work it all the way off. All right, so that's the first one. That's the next one we're gonna try to take out, save the easier one for last. Looks like we have some cabling going there. Um, same cabling, so what we wanna do, it looks like there's a screw, a Phillips head in there. All right, so that's the last one right here. Um, after this one is released, remember that we do still have the cables for the brake light in the um, running down the, the back of this. So you don't want to just yank it. You want to take your time and remove it. And then we'll have to cut the cables. All right, so 
and you can see this basically run all the way but what they're recommending is just cut it about right here and um, that will give us some flexibility if we ever want to put it back we do have that so let me go ahead and cut this and get this removed snip all right now this is fully removed i am going to do a weight um, comparison just to see how much our weight we're saving with this but it seemed like there's some aluminum on here mostly plastic so not a lot of weight probably about six or seven pounds also they provided these three bolts and these are to put in the holes of where we actually took out the fender and that's basically just to keep dirt whatever else from getting in the threads again just in case you want to go back to factory you're gonna have that option all right, so next we want to remove the seat cowl or rear seat as well as the main seat. And uh, we're going to have to do some um, juggling up here. We're going to take out the lights and just, just to get the new stuff in there. So let me go ahead and get this removed and we'll come. All right, so what I did, I removed the clip that the cable is running through. I also removed the zip tie from the end. And I'm trying to work it out to where I can run this up straight through here and to the back, to the rear end. Now... It is going through a plastic um, clip right there that I'm going to have to release. Uh, all you need to do basically squeeze the bottom and it should pop right out. Can't really see it on camera, but it's this guy right here. So let's go ahead and pop that out. All right, so now that we got that off, we're going to remove uh, these two plugs right here. These are for the indicators. Uh, these guys, because we're going to have to pop those loose. So we're going to remove these, then we're going to go ahead and remove. Uh, this plate right here and this should release um, the rear end as well as your actual um, brake light. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so now that we got this loose, uh, we're gonna take our eight millimeter socket. We're gonna remove uh, these two bolts that's holding the tail light in. All right, so with the tail light removed, uh, what we wanna do is uh, remove this clip right here. That's the harness on the other side. That's gonna release the harness. That way you have more room um, to work with. All right, so next we're gonna go ahead and get the indicators loose. Uh, these are gonna be these two bolts right here. They are Allen key. I forget the exact size, but once you remove those, you should be able to get the tail lights out. One thing I should let you guys know is for me, uh, you gotta remember which side of the um, bike each one is on. So for me, the orange harness is gonna be on the left. Blue is gonna be on the right. So keep that in mind. Um, up front, you can see the harnesses. On the actual lights, you can see the color code. That's the blue for the right, orange for the left. All right, so for this step, you're gonna need the indicators, you're gonna need the actual brackets, and you're gonna need the spacers. These are gonna be unique to whichever side of the bike your indicator is on, so you wanna keep that in mind. Uh, make sure that it makes sense. And I wanna start off by uh, Removing the indicator from the housing. Um, this again, I believe is gonna be a five millimeter. Let's go ahead and pull that off. And we'll start with the right side. I think blue was right. All right, so let a bolt come out. We're gonna go ahead and take this part off. All right, so there is a little piece in here that we need to pop out. Um, just to get the harness through. All right, so that piece is gonna come out. And now the rest of this should be rubber um, where you can go ahead and push it out. Let me go ahead and pull this through first. So you can see that's a rubber grommet right there. And that entire piece comes out. I wanna leave this on there because that's where our spacer is gonna go. Spacer is gonna go on like this. So, um, and with less metal is gonna go towards where the hole is. And um, we're gonna run that through. And we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna put it in the grommet. It's kind of like how we took it off. You might need a flat head screwdriver for this, but it's, um, it's doable with, with your hand, as you can see. I am pretty much able to get it through. All right, so it should look like that. All right, so here's the bracket that we're gonna need for this side. And this, you might have to play with it just to see which one it is for you. Uh, but essentially when you run it through, you should have this hole on the bottom.
All right, so this is probably uh, the most difficult part for me yet. <laughs> Just getting both inside the rubber grommets, but I was able to do it. Uh, it's gonna take some maneuvering, some elbow grease, but um, this is what it should look like. This is the right side uh, as well. So this side is gonna go inside the bike and um, your headlight is gonna go like this. Um, last piece that we need to add is the spacer. And, um, and how this will work again is just like we took it out. Basically, uh, this part with the long end is gonna go where the wire is. So you're gonna kind of run it like this. Push it all the way through. All right, so it should look like that. And now we can go ahead and replace the bolt and tighten it down. So, um, like I said, this part was probably the most difficult, cumbersome, just cause there's a lot of small pieces that you gotta keep in mind. Um, but, uh, once you do one of them, once you do the first one, the second one should be pretty straightforward. All right, so it looks like we finally got them fitted together. Uh, again, the blue is going to be on the right, left is going to be orange. So let's get those installed. And uh, basically what we're going to do is just feed them through on the bike and just leave them dangling for now. All right, so I got those fed in. You can see they're just dangling in the back. But I will want to do is make sure that our harnesses are ran through the middle there's a little cutout right there um, and now we're going to go ahead and put this guy in now this needs to go in exactly as it's shown here with the m facing up it's going to go in right here in the bike all right and we're going to use two m6 by 20 bolts and we just run those through as well so now we're going to go ahead and put our lights in and we're going to go ahead and make sure they're in properly guys i'm going to go ahead and make sure they're in as you can see uh, this right here, it is poking up right here. It is. See right there, the bolt is sticking through. If you look at the top, you can see some of it um, poking right there. So that's how you want to make it secure. Then we're going to take this space right here and we're going to thread it on onto that bolt. So let's go ahead and do that. So everything is still pretty loose. Didn't really tighten anything down. These are hand tight. So we still got some work to do. But what we can do now is start fitting the rest of it together. Uh, these are gonna be the M2 by 60 bolts. These are gonna go into where we actually screw through the spacer. And then we do have the other two bolts to go through the bottom along with these guys. So let me go ahead and get that together. Then we'll get into the wiring of the actual light. Got it all fitted. You can see um, everything is tightened up. These are the shorter bolts. Goes all the way through there. Um, nice and sturdy. Um, Come around to the front, you can see the M is facing upward as it should. So next step, we're gonna go ahead and put the tail light back in. Should let y'all know that I also fed the two wire and these are gonna go to the um, lamp for the illumination for the plate. So we're gonna go ahead and connect that here in a little bit. But first, let's get the tail light. We're gonna go ahead and get the main bracket on as well. All right, so I got everything uh, ran back for the most part. You can see everything's tucked in. Uh, here, the plugs are ready to go. Uh, for these, we're gonna hook up the black to the brown and the red to the green. Whichever way you do it, whether it's shrink wrap, connectors, uh, just make sure it's protected. So black to green, red to brown. Now that everything's off, uh, to loosen or get it to a point where we can't adjust it, we got two pinch bolts right here that we need to loosen. So this is gonna require a six millimeter Allen key. Just two of them, you loosen them, then you can get in here, you can see those notches right here. Those notches is where the actual spanner um, goes in, where you can go ahead and adjust it back and forth, just to um, tension your chain. So let's go ahead and we'll start the process. So um, both of these are loose. Let me just double check this last one. All right, so now they're loose. Now we can get in here and we can start um, actually making our adjustments. 
Very important that this spanner um, extension handle, you can see there's an angle upward and inward. So depending if you're adjusting to tighten or loosen, you can go ahead and um, put it on differently. So just measuring the chain, like I said, is between one and three quarters to two inches. Uh, this sitting more towards the two inch, so I'm just gonna tighten it a little bit. So when I go this way, you can see the chain becomes loose. And when I go the other way, you can see the chain becomes a little tighter. So like I said, this is pretty straightforward. As long as you have the right tools, you should be good to go. All right, so that's for me, that's a little bit better. That's where I kind of want it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these. Um, so these pinch bowls need to be at 20 foot pounds when you tighten them. Once those are tightened, I am gonna lubricate the chain and we should be good to go. Also very important to note is that if you look on the other side of your bike, uh, there's a chain wear indicator, which means that if it's in the red, that means that this chain needs to be replaced. So the more you adjust it, um, the chain stretches and over time is gonna become where it needs to be replaced. So keep that in mind. You can see mine is still in the green. I'm not sure how well you guys can see it, but there's a notch right there, still in the green. But if it ever gets in the red, uh, your chain needs to be replaced. All right, so for the lube, I am going to um, just jack it up. It just makes my life a lot easier. You can see uh, chain's clean. It's been adjusted. I uh, removed the, the rear fender. I have the uh, fender eliminator. I'll put the plate on here in a little bit. Just need to lube it, and I should be good to go. All right, so again, uh, this should save me some time as far as uh, cleanup. Uh, so this is going to go right here. This is gonna go on top just to prevent um, spillage. Just angle this guy down, make sure the chain can run freely. All right, and um, we should be able to start spraying. Did his job as far as just keeping everything nice and clean. You can see just a little bit of spillage right there on the floor, but uh, for the most part, this this saved me a lot of um, headache as far as cleanup. So can't complain. So there it is right there with the tail tidy removed. You can see the rear wheel looks a lot cleaner. The rear end looks pretty good. Chain is in good shape, ready to go. And I, I think I'm starting to like the look. Let me know what y'all think in the comments.